Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Shahadi. I am here with WGM Katerina Nemkova. Thank you so much for joining us. Katerina has been a huge hit at our Teen Girls Club, at the U.S. Chess School, Ladies Night at the St. Louis Chess Club. She is a very popular coach, so we're proud to have her here to talk about horsey moves. Hi, Jen, and hi to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for today's lesson because forcing moves are actually my favorite topics, my favorite things to teach, and all my students are introduced to forcing moves. And I really think that when people incorporate forcing moves to their calculations and when, when they try to spot them in games, it can elevate their games and they can really improve as chess players. So I look forward to today's lesson. I, I, I do too, and I, I also love the theory of forcing moves, so I kind of want to see what, um, what twists you have on it to make it better or easier for people to learn, because, you know, I sometimes do tell people over and over, look for the forcing moves, but then do they all actually do it? That is the question. It's very similar with move candidates. I think everybody came across this topic, and that's kind of the pre-lesson that I have before forcing moves, and we did it in the girls' teens class, because you need to look for alternatives. You need to look for options in your chess games. But people know that, but they don't always do it, so that's a problem sometimes. Just before I uh, start sharing my screen, screen, I just want to say I'm really happy to, uh, to meet with all the girls in the virtual space. And thank you so much, Jen, for putting this together. I can imagine it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work and time uh, to make something like this works. Oh, thank you so much. Well, it's a highlight to you know, not only do the sessions, but learn something myself, as you, you have some beautiful examples. So I can't wait to see what you have. Perfect. So let's do it. So before we start to do actual puzzles, I just want to make sure I give credit to Charles Herton and, um, and really think about the books that influenced me. These books are wonderful. I have both editions uh, and those are most of the puzzles that we will be doing are from these two books. So let's start with quiz question number one. So what is a forcing move? So maybe pause this video for a second and try to think for yourself. What do you consider a forcing move? And let's look at the answer. The answer is forcing move is a move which limits the opponent's options. So if that was your answer, good job. And one more question. Can you name four types of forcing moves? Now again, take your time and try to think about four types of forcing moves. Maybe one comes immediately, but then the three other options can be slightly harder to think about. Now, if your answer is yes, that you can name four types, that's not a good option. I don't take that. So I need you to name actual forcing moves. So the answer is checks, captures, threatening pieces, and threatening checkmates. Those are four types of forcing moves that we will be discussing today and that you should look for when you are selecting your move candidates in a chess game. Okay, so let's look at actual puzzles. Okay. So here we have our first position, white to move. And because it's the first one, I'm gonna give a hint and white to checkmate. So what would you play in this position? Now, first, before looking for checkmates, it's really important to kind of scan the position. So take one minute to see what's happening. Maybe you notice that the queen is actually hanging, but other than that, that the material looks kind of equal. So I will get rid of all these colors now. And let's see if you can find a checkmate. So when we think about forcing moves, we have a couple forcing moves. So we start with checks. So we have one check, second check, third check, right? And then we have maybe captures. And those are maybe some attacks. And those are all forcing moves that we have. But obviously you know that some of them don't make huge sense and for example taking the rook we can discard immediately because they take us so we want to look for those that looks the most promising and i'm sure that by now you probably noticed that queen f8 is the best answer now you always have to consider if somebody takes as the first option so what happens if white takes now we have another forcing move bishop h6 now the king is in check now this rook is guarding this line, 
this file, so King cannot go there. Nothing to block, so King has, King has to move. And then we have checkmate. Perfect, so look, let's look at the line. So here, take, check, checkmate. And if we look at the other line, let's say imagine that after we play queen f8, the king moves here, doesn't take. Now, can you spot a checkmate? And you've probably done so already, queen h6. Very good job. Let's play it out. Perfect. So this was the first puzzle about forcing moves. Kind of maybe easier, uh, but don't worry, we will go to more difficult puzzles. So let's move on to the next puzzle. Okay. All right, so let's go with a second puzzle. Again, it's white to move. Now first, take some, time, take some time to notice what's happening in the position, what's the material balance, what do you think you want to accomplish? And look for options, look for forcing moves. So maybe some of the forcing moves you considered was taking here, taking here, but we kind of see that if we take on h7 with the queen, the king recaptures and there is no follow-up. So it doesn't really work. If we take the rook, the queen recaptures and nothing pretty much is happening. We can take the pawn, but the queen can move away and not a big deal. Or maybe it's better to move here, not to get, uh, not to get issues on the back rank. Okay, so what other forcing moves we have? So we do not have only checks. We can also attack the pieces. Yeah, I like this one, Katarina, because I feel like if there were a pawn on g6, it would be easier to find. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. So yeah. Jin is understanding that this is going to be really a big issue. So we do want to think about moves like rook g6, where we want to, um, where we want to actually attack the g7 square and checkmate. Now, the best move to start with is rook e6. Very kind of tricky, sneaky move. The idea is to kind of force the queen to go away from the rook or move from the seventh rank. Ah, yeah, because then you don't have f6, right? So if you play rook g6 so at, right away, you can at least hang on for a minute with f6. Very good, yeah. We yeah. can play f6 and try to survive. We may also, I wonder whether we can just play it here, rook g8. Oh, awesome, yeah. Yeah. But it's really important to kind of get the ideas. And when we understand that rook g6 is going to be an issue, we can wait with that threat. And let's start with rook e6. Now, the queen obviously can take, because a lot of issues are going to happen after we take checkmate immediately. So the queen has to move. Only one square to, to move to. Queen d8. And now we're going to go with the first idea that Jen talked about, which is rook g6. Now the queen is no longer on the seventh rank, so f6 doesn't work. And if rook g8, black tries to kind of, you know, protect the g7, now the issue is that now we take on f7 because the pawn is no longer protected. And again, queen wants to take. Now you may try to give a check. I move here. You may try another check. I block it with the pawn. You may try another check. I move here. Couple checks, but now when checks are over, black can pretty much resign. So another really great idea to think about forcing moves, because if I go back for a second, and in this position, if you do not consider forcing moves, it's really difficult to even play this position for a win, because this pawn is pretty dangerous and can try to run with, together with maybe rook d1 and attacking the king. So you, you know, forcing moves are really important because they, uh, they help you to see and foresee the future. And if it's a good future, obviously you want to kind of go for that. So let's move on for next puzzle. And this one is gonna be actually from my own game. So this is from a game that I played. So I was white. This is what just continued, but I want to see, uh, I want to show you what actually followed. And, uh, Right now, or actually on move here, I already got the idea and calculated it to the end. Um, so after this move, rook b6, black wants to capture this pawn, obviously. Now white can try to maybe defend it and you know, 
uh, that's totally possible. But I got a really cool idea. And the idea was that I want to move my pawn here to trap the rook. And if black doesn't allow it and captures the pawn here, then this pawn is kind of free to go. So this is what followed. So I played b4, rook takes, bishop takes, rook takes b2. But now is the position that I actually want you to think about for a little bit. How do you continue here? Because white is already having huge advantage here. You could think the material is equal. Maybe black has an advantage because it's a, a passed pawn far away from the kings. So what did I play here? What did I see with my b4 idea? So I hope you started to think about, again, forcing moves, right? That's the topic for today. So you can think about forcing moves, maybe attacking the rook. That's, because if we play something like this and attack the knight, then the knight is really protected, so it's not such a big deal. So those are kind of forcing moves that you, should, you could have considered, but there is another one that's really strong. And I hope you found a really cool move, knight e8 here. And it's a forcing move because if black takes, we are threatening a checkmate, right? So we are attacking the uh, knight and threatening checkmate. Another idea is that we want to maybe take the bishop and then pin everything here on this diagonal. So I played knight e8. Now my opponent uh, could have played knight h5, but still back rank issues are gonna happen because the knight is not a great defender for the back rank and there are a lot of dark weak squares. So here uh, white would still have a huge advantage because let's say you move here, it's not gonna really help you much because check, king here, here, and you're gonna lose the rook. So black didn't play this and black played knight d7. Now I will stop again for a second and think what I played here or what would you play in this position? And I hope you considered another strong forcing move, rook e7. I'm attacking the knight. And again, it may, look, it may look very simple. I'm just attacking the knight, but more issues are happening because remember this knight was also protecting this square. So if I take the bishop, I can move the, with the bishop here. So now black has some troubles. And black decided to give a check to at least move the rook from b2, which is a great idea, especially when check is an intermediate move. But the issue remains. Now you have to decide what to do with your knight. Now, if you go knight f8, which is probably a better idea than what happened in the game, I can still take here, give you a check, and then pin you here and kind of get the piece and a lot of issues are happening. And this one is kind of advanced. But what happened in the game, allowed me to finish very beautifully, was knight b6. So what do you do now as white? Now you may thought about, okay, I'm gonna take the pawn, obviously, very easy forcing move. That's true, taking pawn is a good move, but there is something much, much stronger. And I think you found it. The very strong move is knight f6. And now black cannot do anything because if the king, we start with capturing, right? So if the bishop takes, check here, 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 and checkmate. And if the black does not take and move the king, either way, we have rook e8 with checkmate following. And nothing can stop us from going here, even if you move with the pawn. Remember this knight is guarding g h7. So I think this was a really great example. Again, when I go all the way back here, it started with this move before, realizing that you know this back rank is kind of weak and everything I'm doing is making forcing moves. Again, rook took, bishop is attacking the rook and I'm capturing, forcing move. Rook takes, Knight goes here, another forcing move, attacking the bishop um, and wanting, also wanting a checkmate, right? I don't know if I mentioned it before, but if I take, I'm still threatening rook e8 and bishop f8. So knight moved here, another forcing move. Check, knight b6, and last and final forcing move. 
So it's really cool. It's, you know, sometimes people ask how far, you know, or how deep do you calculate? But if there are forcing moves, you do not, you should not stop. You should continue uh, looking and calculating these forcing moves because if you do, you can have such beautiful endings. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you can, uh, you can calculate a lot more when it's all forcing, right? That's why that question is so funny because if you're a math person, it's like, a 10 move forcing line is only 10 moves, but a 10 move non-forcing line could be like hundreds of different moves. If you have to look at all the branches, it's impossible. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to another type of forcing moves, which, which are called sometimes like brute calculation. That means that you uh, maybe know what you want to do. It kind of looks, uh, you know, suspicious, the position, but you need to make sure that you calculate all the positions and all the variations. Here we go, white to play. And then again, since we are at the beginning, I will tell you that we want to checkmate black and it is gonna be super forcing. So let's see if you can spot forcing moves. But again, before you start looking for forcing move, kind of scan the position, look what's happening. Maybe you see the king is kind of stuck, the pieces are not doing anything here. This is super suspicious. So you do need to be aware about what's happening on the position before you start to do forcing moves. Otherwise you could, you know, uh, get totally exhausted by maybe looking at, you know, capturing this pawn or some ridiculous ideas. So you do want to scan uh, the position so you are selecting or kind of figuring out uh, forcing moves that makes the most sense. So I guess the forcing moves you considered was queen takes f8. Now again, maybe you realize, okay, king takes, nothing is happening. But still, queen takes f8 is a forcing move and it's good to consider it. Because maybe there could have been, a, you know, another piece somewhere, rook here trying to checkmate. So don't worry about calculating wrong or bad forcing moves because we tried them immediately and that's fine. So, okay, queen takes f8 does not work. Maybe you considered knight f6. Maybe rook takes e6, maybe knight c7. So one of these moves is actually the correct one. But I need to make sure that you have the whole variation. So again, feel free to pause this video to make sure you calculate until checkmate. And I will get rid of the arrows. <laughs> and by this time, I assume that you found the best solution, which is knight c7, very strong move. You are giving check, this rook is guarding this file, only one move possible for black, which is to take. Now another forcing move, rook takes e7, king has to recapture. This is not legal on the queen would attack the king, so king recaptures. Another forcing move, only move with the king and checkmate. Again, I think really nice puzzle. I love when we calculate these puzzles. Um, because it's not that easy. I know when we see the solution now that we may think, oh, it's so easy, but there are so other options that we could, could have considered, like maybe uh, here after capturing, playing something like rook d8. That was my variation that I considered first when I saw, saw this puzzle, but yeah, right? But nothing is happening the because we see- one, because it's like lateral, it makes, it looks more natural for some reason. It's just so immediate. And then queen takes f8, but- the problem is you play king d7 and king c6, right? Yeah, and we kind actually, of run, run away. Yeah, there's actually no mate here because the knight on c5 does such a great job in c7, yeah. Yeah, and if we just consider, we can even develop mm -hmm. and all is good. But the thing is that we do not have to get the correct variation on the first try. A lot of you know, students ask me if like grandmasters see the best variation on the first try, and that's not the case. They just eliminate those that do not work. So that's why it's really important to focus on practicing tactics and practicing forcing moves to get into the habit of calculating a lot and rejecting and trashing lines. So you can actually find the one that's, that's the best. By the way, Katarina, I think one reason probably, you know, you and I and maybe a lot of other good players look at Rook D8 first is because visually it looks like it's more forcing because you have to take with the king. But in reality, mm -hmm. Rook E7 is just as forcing because you have to take with the king too. But it looks like it's more protected, right? Of course, the bishop on f8 is actually pinned. 
I wonder sometimes, I would be very curious to give like grid masters some puzzles like this and to see their process, their thought process, which variations they calculated the first. I think this would be so exciting for us to see that, you know, maybe they do not get it on the first try, but they just get it so fast and within seconds, they just reject so many variations. So with that being said, let's move on to next puzzle. So let's do this one. Black to move this time. How to win? So by now, I'm sure you are definitely considering this move because you see this is kind of suspicious. But how to checkmate? Okay, and I hope you found this really beautiful checkmate, which is rookie one check, king g2. Now we are going to use this bishop, maybe not right now, but this is something that's definitely on our kind of uh, eye as we had from the other puzzles that this bishop h3 is going to be very, very strong. But we start with rook g1, super difficult move to find, to find. We are giving up a rook, but the goal is to kind of allow queen to jump to the play and check the king with the forcing move. Another check. And now, who didn't find this, maybe forgot what is the really, really strong move here. This is nice. This is the uh, flip side of something you showed us earlier. Yes, but you see how, you know, when it's not move one, but it's maybe move four, we sometimes don't see it as easily because, again, it's not that normal to play this super brilliant move, queen f1, who's giving, giving up queens for free. But again, if you think about forcing moves, you think about checks and you think about, you know, bishop h3 wanting to be a check. So now it crosses your mind and you consider it. And again, if it wouldn't work, it's fine. You just stretch the line and it doesn't work. But it actually works here. So queen f1, king takes, bishop h3 here and checkmate. Really good puzzle and I really like... Uh, to show this puzzle, I even showed it uh, when I was coaching at a World Cadet in China last year, and I showed it to all my students to make sure they are, you know, looking at forcing moves during all their games because it's very important to make sure th that you are kind of, you know, laser focused on the position and trying to uh, calculate very precisely. Now I'm sharing a puzzle which is kind of hard. It's not very easy to find this one. So if you are not that advanced, don't worry. Just try to follow the same kind of steps that we did before. Scan the position first, looks what, what is happening, and then select some candidate moves, some forcing moves. So black to play here, and black tries to win. So some forcing moves are maybe knight takes here, maybe check here. But we see it. Nothing exciting here. Maybe, maybe not much is happening. There's something better. And if you play knight b3, and again, good idea, but now we just take maybe here, here. Again, not much is happening. So what is another move that's forcing? So maybe you think that you would like to get rid of this bishop because if the bishop was not there, you could play knight b3 checkmate, right? Because the king can't move here if we have the knight. And we have also this bishop guarding this diagonal. So, so now when scanning the position, you are kind of seeing that this guy is a defender that you want to get rid of. So maybe the first forcing move that you consider is b5 which again makes the same idea I want black to, I want white to take and then be super happy about checkmating. And sometimes we calculate this way and then we play b5 and we hope for the best for white to take, but that's not really how we should, you know, play chess. We should not hope for the best, but we should calculate the best line and then play the best move. And if we play b5, unfortunately the bishop is just gonna return. And again, not much is happening. The bishop is still guarding the b3. So I want to give you one last option to figure out what to do here. And maybe now you found it, the really, really strong move, queen b5. Super strong move with the same idea. We want the bishop to take the queen, and it doesn't matter if you take pawn or queen on the b5. 
because we still have the same thing. Knight b3 checkmate. And now queen b5, you can just return with the bishop because the queen is now attacking this and now I can just checkmate you. So again, another maybe very simple puzzle when you see the solution, but in a chess game, it's super hard to find and it's especially hard to find if you are not looking for forcing moves at all. People who are not looking for forcing moves may think about, you know, maybe developing the rook or attacking now the bishop, which is kind of forcing move actually, but they don't get to those beautiful solutions uh, because you need to take sometimes a step further. What do you think, Jen? I love this one. And I think the way to find this one is to look at B5 and, you know, notice that after knight B5, you could play knight B3 right away where queen takes B5. And then, you know, it might occur to you to play queen B5 first. Um, I love this one. And I think it's, it's really beautiful. And I'm looking at the player um, as black, uh, Alexander Shabla, four-time U.S. champion. And, you know, you can't help but smile because he's famous for these types of moves. Uh, he definitely did a lot of puzzle to become a grandmaster and a lot of forcing moves. Very creative player, indeed. So I want to look at the last types of forcing moves, uh, which are maybe not that easy to spot. Perfect. So now we have another position where we have black to play and we will actually play some type of, some kind of different forcing moves, which is still forcing, it still limits uh, white's options but maybe it's not that easy to spot. And again, we are not looking for just one move, but the whole variation. So black to play, continue with the same pattern. First, kind of scan the position, what is happening there, and then look for candidate moves, for forcing moves, and then just calculate the lines. So it's black to play, and maybe some of the moves you considered was rook takes, rook takes, Maybe check, but then you spot it that the queen can take it. What else could you consider? Maybe taking here, but then again, thinking maybe it's not that great. But you'd definitely notice that first the knight is hanging here, and also that white has a queen, and black has two rooks for it. But this queen is pretty active with maybe capturing this pawn in future, this pawn running. So we don't have much time to spare. We really need to um, figure out what to do. And you also maybe notice that this king is kind of stuck, right? When we see this king and we see this knight, there are not too many squares where the king can go to. Okay, so saying all that, I'll give you a couple more seconds to find a solution. How to checkmate white here. And maybe you found it. So let's see. So the correct solution is rook takes g2. Maybe you considered it, but you said, okay, what's going to happen after knight takes g2? And now we have a really tricky, sneaky move, which is rook g3. This is a super quiet move, but still very forcing, right? And the super cool thing is that we are threatening rook takes g h3 checkmate. And if you decide to defend the pawn with knight f4, then we have another checkmate on g1. And there is simply nothing you can do. Maybe you can prolong your life by just, you know, sacrificing the queen, but then that's it. Maybe you can try to move the bishop here, but I'm not even going to take it. I'm going to take here, here, and checkmate. Super cool. I really like this puzzle again because we sometimes forget about these, you know, silent moves, but they are super powerful. And I will actually show you one of my games where I played. Uh, silent move. Okay, so here we are with another puzzle. It's actually from a game that I played at the Czech Open, which is one of the, it's probably the biggest tournament in the Czech Republic. People from all over the Europe, even from the United States, often travel here, travel here and play this tournament. I don't think it's happening this, um, this year because it's usually happening in July but maybe next year. If you are interested in coming to Czech Republic, this is definitely a tournament that I would uh, recommend. So what happened here, I captured only three, white captured as well. And now I played really strong move f4. My idea is I want to break on the king side. White took, I took, king h2. 
Now it's your time to shine. What are you going to play here? Again, scan the position, see what's happening. So a couple of things that you should notice when you are scanning the position. First is these two rooks. They are super strong. They are on open and kind of semi-open file. Next thing that you can kind of notice is that this knight is being attacked and defended by this. But it's kind of shaky. Every time you have a piece that's already being attacked, you have to be very careful about the piece. And the other thing that you should notice is that this rook could be eyeing on the, on the queen. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to find the move that I actually played in the game, which, which is very strong. And I remember I was having a time issues, but I immediately thought that's the best move. And when you have time trouble and your opponent has time trouble, that's the move you want to make kind of quiet move that still gives a lot of problems to white. And probably you find it, found it. Queen g8, really strong move. So what's happening now? I'm hiding the queen, but I'm not really trying to be passive. I'm trying to be very active and very aggressive with this rook and this knight maybe jumping off and attacking the queen. And it's not that easy now what you do, because remember, uh, you know that the knight wants to jump somewhere, but you can just move the queen here, for example, or here, because then this knight is no longer defended. So white decided to play rook e3, but then I played knight d3. And now the queen is attacked, and you're going to lose the knight. And that's what happened. White played here, I took, and I even gave a check. Nice. Nice check. And just well, I guess it would have been fine anyway because of queen g8. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, probably if I just took here, you still can really take because this pawn is going to be another queen. But check is just, it makes just more sense. More technical, but, precise. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Take everything. What a game. I love it. Queen g8, beautiful move. Stunning. Quiet move. Lethal. Um, it's really yeah, do you remember from your games, Jennifer, when somebody or when you play these moves and suddenly somebody has three minutes and they don't know what to do because just so many threats are on the board? Oh, it's a, it's a brilliant move. Very sneaky. Lethal. <laughs> creeping. They, they sometimes call those moves creeping with the queen because the queen is such a powerful piece that sometimes it can be hard to find the one mover queen moves. Right? That's those true. Little side steps. And there are a lot of games that I actually suffered because I missed my opponent's forcing moves. But maybe I'm going to show them in the next videos. Now I'm going to show my brilliant games. <laughs> I love it. Beautiful. This is, a, this is great examples. I'm really excited. Um, I'm glad, so glad you were able to show us some of these. I think it, it's the kind of examples that make people inspired to do their own self-study as well. Um, with the book yeah. that you mentioned, I love that book too. Um, forcing moves. It's it's wonderful by Harston, right? Mm -hmm. Charles uh, Herton. I will share it one more time. I think we need yeah. a second edition with a with a female player deadlifting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually for the new for the new edition, I saw that uh, Carlson Pontus m made a foreword, and he was writing how he studies the book as well, how, how all his students read it, or how he make position as homeworks for them. I mean, it's. It's such a great move if you are a coach, if you are a student. Uh, so I really recommend to study it because it's just so fun also when you find those forcing moves and you can make these brilliant ideas. So, uh, I, and the funny part is I don't even remember who introduced forcing moves to me. I, I think I just somehow came across the book and then I was just like amazed because it's something that I, I know for maybe like eight, seven years, not longer. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And there's a new edition. I didn't know that. I'll check that out. I like that at least, okay, it's definitely a man's arm, but then there's a queen on the arm. So they're giving a shout out to the, uh, the female players. But yeah, we need, we need an edition with a, a woman just dead laughing a couple hundred pounds on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, you can see so many strong uh, players, female players, having such beautiful games with so many cool, strong forcing moves. So I think there will be even addition just for women's uh, games that will be enough puzzles there. 
Yeah, well, I have Play Like a Girl, which is like a book of, of like ch- ch- checkmates by female chess players. But yeah, since I wrote that, there's been even more great female players kind of who've um, achieved such wonderful things, especially here and um, really all over the world. But there, when I wrote Play Like a Girl, we didn't have the IMs like um, Chrissy Yip and Annie Wang and all, all these incredible young crop of female players in America. Yeah, I really like your book, uh, Play Like a Girl. And I, and I especially like how you not only talk about the puzzles, but you also introduce the female players because uh, let's face it, they're not always introduced somewhere. So it's very hard to learn about them. And they did play fantastic chess and they have beautiful puzzles to solve. So uh, yeah, great book. That's the thing about chess. If you play like a pretty good opening and you work on your tactics and your imagination, you will have games and positions that are worthy of these lessons, right? It's, it's, it might not be within reach for everybody to become world champion, but to play a beautiful chess game and a wonderful, amazing sacrifice, like that's something that if you put a little bit of work into it, well, not a little bit, but a decent chunk of work into it, um, it's a bucket list item that everyone can achieve. Yeah, one disclaimer that I would have is my students, after they start to really think about move candidates and they really do forcing moves, they spot them, they calculate them, their rating actually drops a little bit because they blunder very fast because they're just so tired. But after a couple of months, they get used to it and they rating, their rating just skyrockets because they learn the, the perfect way to do the chess and they are actually not tired anymore for calculating the lines. So if you start to adopt forcing moves and start to adopt, adopt uh, candidate moves, don't think that you know, over the night your rating is gonna be amazing, but it's the right way. You know, it's a hard way, but it's the right way to go and improve. Great, great advice. Thank you so much, Katerina Nemkova. Where should we follow you? On Twitter, right? Yes, you can definitely follow me on Twitter. If girls are following, I, I am excited to be teaching again the teens class. So I look forward to see them there as well. Thank you so much, Katerina Nemkova. Four scene moves, what a, a brilliant examples. And use them in your game. Remember, captures, checks, and threats, especially checkmate threats, but really any kind of threat. So thank you so much for having me, Jen. Thank you, Katerina. Bye.